When talking about the inestimable value of old money, it is near impossible that conversations about real estate do not come up. Across the world, the wealth of several old money families is deeply rooted in possessing several majestic and sometimes historic buildings. One such family is the Grosvenor family, an exceptional British old money household that owns half of all the properties in London. So, the next time you're walking through the vibrant city and taking in the beauty of its modern and ancient architectural masterpieces, bear in mind that at some point in your sightseeing, you have come in contact with the vast and timeless wealth of the Grosvenor family. However, their grasp on British society goes far beyond the wealth and properties they possess. Their influence spread even to the inner circles of British royalty and nobility. In this video, we'll be talking about the incredible wealth of this dynasty, the origin of their centuries-old power in the City of London, and a rundown of all the magnificent properties owned by the Groveners. Be sure to watch to the end, as you don't want to miss the connection this family has to the most powerful family in England. So grab a bottle of your favourite drink, and let's go on a journey as far back as the foundation of England itself. What's the origin of the Grosvenor dynasty? The ancestry of the Groveners can be traced back over a thousand years. However, their association with London's impressive real estate portfolio began in 1677, over 340 years ago. Through this association, the Groveners have held massive power within the country, but their introduction to power can be traced back to the very beginning. Their ancestor and patriarch was none other than a man by the name of Gilbert Le Grosvenor, who was the right-hand man of William the Conqueror himself. Gilbert accompanied his friend and master, the future King of England from France. By this influential association, he soon gained possession of the choicest lands in the best parts of England. Gilbert's fame became widely known, a powerful man in his own right, so much so that his emblem could be identified in the whole land. Within the next 600 years, his descendants walked the path their patriarch had paved for them, and by doing so, they successfully increased their family's value, not just in terms of power, but also of wealth and property. By the 1500s, the Grosvenor family was known for their investments in coal, stone, and lead mines, mines which were planted in Denbyshire and Flintshire. However, the first baronet, Sir Richard Grosvenor, ensured the family's rise to nobility. After graduating from the prestigious Oxford University and a brief position as the High Sheriff of Cheshire, Sir Richard secured his position as an English nobleman after being knighted by King James in 1617. Shortly after, he was awarded the baronet title and in no time, he won the hearts of the English public with his charm, charisma and eloquence. Even today, some of his diary entrances are regarded as jewels passed on from that time in history. Unfortunately, the family's climbing wealth plummeted in 1640 after they proclaimed their support for the king during the English Civil War. However, the family's wealth was restored by Sir Thomas Grosvenor, the visioneer who paved the way for their vast property empire. He masterminded the construction of several timeless properties, including the residence where the sprawling Eaton Hall stands today. This property, as well as several other ones owned by the Groveners, contributed to the aesthetics and the prosperity of the Cheshire community as a whole. As impressive as the Groveners' real estate portfolio was in the 1600s, it was nothing compared to the new levels of wealth they were ushered into, thanks to the marriage of Sir Thomas and Mary Davies. Mary was not just the daughter of another wealthy man, she was the heiress of Ebury's Manor, a vast expanse of land acquired by her great-grandfather. From this great inheritance, the Groveners required a dowry, a 500-acre patch of meadows and marshlands. In the following centuries, these bare and crude lands dramatically transformed into the districts of Mayfair and Belgravia, now two of London's most opulent neighbourhoods. Much to their advantage, the Groveners could seize the opportunity presented by London's fast economic growth and build a fortune. They managed to convert the vast expanse of land acquired by marriage into London's most prestigious neighbourhoods. 
The 1720s saw the development of Mayfair when the Groveners began the development of the district. Thanks to its appealing layout, outstanding quality and architecture of its buildings, proximity to the Court of St. James and the Royal Parks, and the magnificent Grosvenor Square at the heart of Mayfair, the district became associated with a high societal status. While Mayfair quickly became the choicest neighbourhood in London, the development of Belgravia was also underway. It happened in 1815, after the heat of the tragic Napoleon War had been extinguished. After the war, the population of London increased exponentially. In fact, the city became the most populated in the world by the end of that century. Although London was overwhelmed, the Groveners saw this as another opportunity to expand their family's wealth. In the 1820s, Robert Grosvenor, who would eventually become the first Marquess of Westminster, took the opportunity of developing land to the southwest of Mayfair, between Hyde Park and the River Thames. This bare land was uncharted territory with proximity to Buckingham House, which was being converted into a new palace for King George IV. The construction of appealing houses, garden squares, streets and crescents, a symbol of regality, marked the development of this new district of Belgravia. The neighbourhood was unlike anything previously seen in central London. Very quickly, Belgravia became one of London's most desirable residential addresses. Its magnetic aura attracted some individuals from the forefront of the worlds of politics, science and the arts, and following World War II, it became a preferred location for many embassies and institutions. And just like that, the Groveners found themselves at the heart of London's rapid urban expansion, while other old money families struggled to acclimatise with the rough tides of the country's evolution. The Victorian era was indeed an excellent time for the Grosvenor's property expansion, and it was also during this era that this powerful family established a close connection with the British monarchy. The relationship between the Groveners and the British monarchy came to be thanks to Sir Hugh Lupus Grosvenor, the first modern Grosvenor, and the man who ushered the Grosvenor dynasty into their possession of half of the capital. His marriage to his cousin, Lady Constance Gower, further cemented the relationship between these two incredibly powerful families. To put things in perspective, the wedding was held at St. James Palace, the previous official residence of the kings and queens of England. And not only were the highest nobilities in the country in attendance, but Queen Victoria and Prince Albert also attended the ceremony. Years after the wedding, Queen Victoria acknowledged the contribution of the Groveners in transforming London's property landscape into a captivating haven of blossoming infrastructures. As such, she bestowed on Sir Hugh the Duchy of Westminster, making him the first Duke of Westminster, a title still in the family to date. As the century unfolded, the Groveners expanded their properties beyond London and established new ones in Scotland and other parts of Europe. This advancement was due to the forward thinking of Gerald Grosvenor, the sixth Duke of Westminster, who capitalised on his predecessor's progress. After the unforgettable contributions of Sir Hugh, the following notable member of the Grosvenor family was Gerald, who took the family to new heights of success, wealth and influence. In his days, the family name had become synonymous with top-tier real estate, not just in London, but other parts of Europe. At first, the family's real estate holdings were managed by Gerald, and in 1989, he was placed as the second richest person in the UK, worth a staggering £3.2 billion, which is equivalent to about £9 billion in today's economy. He was surpassed only by Queen Elizabeth II. As the years passed, the Grosvenor Group branched into other spheres, including urban property, rural estate, tech, food and agriculture. The group's urban property ventures have overseen many notable projects, including the development and management of Washington DC, the magnificent capital of the United States of America. Even today, the Grosvenor family maintains a commanding and influential presence, proving that they can maintain generational wealth and status and continue to expand it beyond the heartland of London. More than half of the family's wealth still stems from their ownership of half of London, especially Mayfair, where the American Embassy, the Beaumont Hotel, the Gagosian Gallery are, and their over 250 acres in Belgravia. 
Their holdings also extend to other properties such as the Biscuit Factory in Bermondsey, St. Mark's in Mayfair, and estates in Lancashire, Cheshire, Scotland and Spain. Across the shores of Europe, the Grosvenor Group has also invested in multi-million dollar companies and community-centered projects in America, Canada, Hong Kong and elsewhere. The family's figurehead and 7th Duke of Westminster, Hugh Grosvenor, now has an estimated net worth of £13 billion. However, in true old money fashion, the Duke leads a relatively low-key life, but he is well known for his close relationship with Prince William and as godfather to the young Prince George. Another significant family member is Lady Edwina Grosvenor, who has chosen the path of philanthropy through her charity organisation One Small Thing, which plays a part in prison reform and catering to the needs of helpless women and children. From the days of William the Conqueror to the 21st century, the Groveners have come a long way, shaping the world of business, infrastructure and humanitarian work in an awe-inspiring fashion. Let us know in the comments which of their accomplishments you find the most impressive. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more old money content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the following video.